Okay, let's look at analysis of units and conversions in chemistry. In the warm-up, it says pl place a check by the larger quantity in each row of the table. So if we're looking at a kilogram of butter versus a pound of butter, um, the kilogram is going to be um, a larger quantity. A five-kilometer hiking trail versus a five-mile mountain bike trail. The one on the right for sure. A liter of milk versus a quart of milk. Liters larger. A 12 centimeter ruler or a 12 inch ruler. Inches are larger. A 15 gram piece of chocolate. A 15 ounce chocolate bar. So that's going to be the ounce chocolate bar. A temperature of 22 degrees Celsius or a temperature of 22, 4, uh, 22 degrees Fahrenheit. I believe it is the degrees Fahrenheit. Um, let's talk about measurement throughout history here. Now, units of measurement were originally based on nature and everyday activities. The grain was derived from the mass of a grain of wheat or barley, and the fathom was the distance between the tips of a sailor's fingers when his arms were extended. And there was a lack of consistency, so that's why they standardized units over the years, and they incorporated, um, they were incorporated into what was known as the English units of measurement. And um, the, following the Battle of Hastings in 1066, Roman measures were added to the primarily Anglo-Saxon ones that made up this system, and these units were standardized by the Magna Carta of 1215, and they were updated periodically until the UK Weights and Measurements Act of 1824, which resulted in a big review and renaming to the imperial system of measurement. The United States had become independent prior to this, and they didn't adopt the imperial system, and they continued to use the older English units of measure. And there was a need for a simpler system based on uh, decimals, or multiples of 10. And um, most of the credit is given to Gabriel uh, Mouton of Lyon, France, as the originator of the metric system. And the Bureau of Weights and Measures was established in France in 1825. And the BIPM has governed the metric system ever since. And since 1960, the metric system has become the SI system, or the International System of Units. There are only three countries in the entire world that have not adopted it, Burma, Liberia, and the United States. And this is shown on the next page. Um, this is the map of the world showing the countries that have adopted the SI system, and those are all green. Now, let's talk about dimensional analysis. A method um, for converting from one unit to another uh, through the use of conversion factors, sometimes called the factor label method, is dimensional analysis. And a conversion factor is a fraction or a factor written so that the denominator and the, and the numerator are equivalent values, but they have different, different units. Um, for instance, an inch equals 2.54 centimeters would be considered um, a unit equation that we can write as a fraction or a conversion factor. Now, there are a couple things that I want to mention here that I want you to know. I want you to know that a centimeter cubed equals a milliliter. Um, and uh, you should know that an inch is exactly the same length as 2.54 centimeters. That means that this unit factor has infinite sig figs and will not affect the sig figs in a result. Um, and the number one in a conversion factor is always exact, not just in this specific one. And if we take a look at an example at the bottom here, you will notice that they're converting between yards and centimeters using some common equivalencies. A yard is three feet, a foot is 12 inches. And they're starting with 1.00 yards. This is three significant figures. And since I'm only multiplying and dividing, that means my final result will also have three significant figures as it does right here. 
Now remember that an inch equals 2.54 centimeters is exact. So this unit factor here is exact. So it has infinite significant figures. So it does not affect the significant figures in my final result. The number one here and the number one here, these are also exact. They also have infinite sig figs and don't affect the, the sig figs in my final answer. And this is a defined quantity that is exact as well. A yard is three feet and a foot is 12 inches. So that's why we're not using those to round off to um, a lower number of significant figures. So these defined quantities are um, stated here on the next page. And um, since they're things that we didn't measure, they're not affecting the sig figs in my answer. Um, now, if you are converting, let me bring this down a little bit. If you are converting within the same system, then um, it is likely that you will not be affected by um, the sig figs in those unit equations. But if we are converting between two different systems, like the English system and the metric system, then those unit equations may affect your significant figures. The only one that you don't need to worry about is the 2.54 centimeters is exactly an inch. So centimeters is the metric system, inches is the English system. So that's the only multiple system conversion factor that's not going to influence the sig figs in your answer. Now let's talk about converting within the metric system. So the metric system is based on powers of 10. We're either going to have one or two step conversions. The base units are here, meter for length, mass is gram, volume is liter, time is seconds. And then you have your prefixes with the corresponding powers of 10 over here. That looks blurry. Let's get it back into focus. On the left hand side, I want you to memorize giga here all the way down to nano. Here. You need to know the prefix and the symbol and the corresponding power of 10. Now, we are going to have one step metric conversions and two step metric conversions. And I'm going to outline a couple of those for you here in the blank portion of your textbook. Okay, so if you are performing a one step metric conversion. Then that means we are either converting a base unit to a unit with a prefix or you are converting a unit with a prefix to a base unit. And the base unit is always one letter. If there's a unit with a prefix, there will be two letters. It will be the prefix followed by the base unit. So let me give you an example. If you are given some sort of a number and the unit is meters, liters, grams, or second, which are one letter base units, then you would put that number here. And then on the diagonal, you would find the power of 10 that corresponds to the prefix that you're converting to. And it would go on the bottom here with whatever one letter base unit you were given in the problem, meters, liters, grams, or seconds. On the top, you will put the number one with the prefixed unit that you're going to. So you would be dividing, and then that will end up giving you your answer. For B, if you are given some sort of a number and it has a prefixed unit after it. Then down here on the diagonal, you will put the number one 
with that same prefixed unit that you were given. And then on the top, you will put the power of 10 from the prefix that you are converting from. And then that's where you put your meters, liters, grams, or seconds. Okay? Um, now, for two-step conversion, Two-step conversions in the metric system are when you're going to be converting from um, a prefix to another prefix in the metric system. Now that means that you have to stop off at whatever base unit is after that prefix before you can go to the other prefix. So you're going to be given some sort of number, and then you're going to have the prefix unit that you're given here. On the diagonal, you're going to put the number one with the prefix unit that you're given. On the top, you're going to put the corresponding power of 10 for that prefixed unit that you're given. And then on the diagonal here, you're going to put the power of 10 for the prefixed unit that you're going to. And then this will be next to the base unit. I think I made a mistake back here. This is the power of 10 for the prefixed unit that you're given. And then this is the base unit. And then on the top here is the number one next to the prefixed unit that you're going to. Okay, now we're going to, this may not make any sense right now, that's fine. We're going to use this in a couple of examples over here, okay? So let's take a look at the sample problem. If I'm converting 9.4 nanometers into meters, nanometers is a two letter unit, nano is a prefix, meters is a base unit. So that means I'm converting from a prefix unit to a base unit and this is a one-step metric conversion. So when I set it up, the 9.4 nanometers, it's going to go here. This is what is given. Nanometers follows me onto the diagonal because I need to cancel it, and then the unit that I'm going to, that one letter base unit, is on top. You put the number one where the prefix is, which is nano. You look at the table for the corresponding power of 10. Nano equals 10 to the negative 9. You put that on top next to the one letter base unit. I can't emphasize enough. The number one has to go next to the prefix. So wherever you have your two letters, that first letter is the prefix, that second letter is the base in the unit, okay? And nano equals that 10 to the negative nine. In your calculator, this would be 9.4 times second E, negative nine, enter. Now on your calculator, that second E button, the second is in the upper left-hand corner. The E is above the seven. You'll see a comma button with an E, E on it. Press that comma button once and you'll have an E appearing on your calculator, okay? Okay, now, what if you're doing number two? I'm sorry, I didn't give you the answer. The answer is in the book. It's 9.4 times 10 to the negative ninth meters. Let me bring this down a little bit. And since you started with two significant figures, you're ending with two significant figures. And the number one and the corresponding power of 10 are exact because those are defined quantities in the metric system. The number one and power of 10 are always exact. They have infinite sig figs. That's why the two sig figs of 9.4 tell you how many sig figs you have in your final answer. Now, in the second problem, it says convert 6.32 micrometers into kilometers. This is a two-step conversion because micro and kilo are prefixes we have to go back to the base unit first before we can go on to kilometers. 
So we set it up so that the 6.32 micrometers, which is what was given in the problem, goes here. Micrometers follows you onto the diagonal, and the one letter base unit meters goes on top. The number one always goes next to wherever that prefix is. If you look back at the table for the corresponding power of 10, micro equals 10 to the negative 6. You put it next to that one letter base unit so micrometers can cancel. Then, since meters is here, it follows you onto the diagonal and you go to the other prefix unit, which is kilometers. Here, you put the number one next to the prefix unit and you look at the table to get the corresponding power of 10 for kilo, which is 10 to the third. In your calculator, this is 6.32 times second E negative six divided by second E three, enter. You're gonna end up with 6.32 times 10 to the negative ninth. Since you started with three sig figs, that's why you're going to end with three sig figs, okay? Now, let's take a look at the practice problems at the bottom of the page. Let's go through and identify the types of conversions these are. Are they one step or are they two step? So if you take a look at number one, it says convert 16 seconds to kiloseconds. That's a base to prefixed unit. So this is going to be a one step problem. Number two, 75,000 milliliters to liters. That's a prefixed unit to a base unit. Also one step. Number three, 457 kiloseconds to milliseconds, that's a prefix to prefix unit. That requires you to go to the base unit seconds before going to milliseconds. So this is a two-step problem. For number four, you're converting to from megameters to decimeters. This is a two-step problem because you have to go to the base unit meters first before going to decimeters. Now, for number one, Whatever you're given, 16 seconds gets written down first. Seconds will follow you onto the diagonal. Diagonal, kiloseconds is on top. The number one goes where the prefix is, which is kilo. Kilo is 10 to the third. Put it next to the one letter base unit. Here you're dividing. 16 divided by second E, three, enter. The one and power of 10 are exact. They have infinite sig figs, so that means I'm limited by the two sig figs in my 16. This is going to be 0 0.016 kiloseconds, or 1.6 times 10 to the negative 2 kiloseconds is the exact same thing. Number two, 75,000 milliliters into liters. You're given 75,000 milliliters. This unit follows you onto the diagonal. Liters goes on top. The number one goes next to the prefix milli. 10 to the negative third goes next to the one letter base unit. We're going to multiply across. So 75,000 times second E negative three, enter. This is going to be 75 liters. I started with two sig figs. I'm ending with two sig figs. The number one and the power of 10 are exact. Number three, 457 kiloseconds to milliseconds. You have to convert kiloseconds to seconds first because we have to go to the base unit first. We're doing this part. One goes next to kilo. Kilo is 10 to the third. Now we're going to convert seconds to milliseconds. One goes next to milli. Milli is 10 to the negative third. In your calculator, this is 457 times second E3 divided by second E negative 3. Enter. You should get 4.57 times 10 to the 8 milliseconds. Started with three sig figs here, ending with three sig figs here. If you have an E in your calculator, like it says 4.57 E8, do not write E on a paper. This always means it's times 10. That number after the E is giving you the exponent on the power of 10. Number four, 5.6 times 10 to the negative fourth mega meters, mega meters on the diagonal, meters on top, one next to the prefix mega, 10 to the 6 next to the one letter base unit meters. 
Then you're going to convert meters to decimeters. One next to the prefix deci. Deci is 10 to the negative 1. Power of 10 goes next to the base unit. Here in your calculator, 5.6 second e negative 4 times second e6 divided by second e negative 1. Enter. And this is going to be 5,600 decimeters or 5.6 times 10 to the third decimeters. I started with two sig figs and I'm ending with two sig figs. Let's look at the next page. Let's talk about derived units. Derived units are going to have more than one unit in them. That means there's either going to be a fraction symbol or they're going to be raised to a power. This would be things like kilometers per hour, grams per milliliter, centimeters cubed. Okay, so these, come, these units come from multiplying or dividing units together. And since they're fraction units, we can use them to convert from one to another. For instance, if you have 55 kilometers per hour, and we want to convert that to meters per second, I can write the kilometers per hour as a fraction. And then if I'm going to meters per second, you can convert kilometers to meters in a one-step metric conversion here. And then hours can get converted to minutes and then to seconds, because you know there are 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in a minute. So hours would cancel on the up diagonal and so would minutes. And here's your meters per second. The 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in a minute are defined quantities. Therefore, they do not limit the sig figs in your answer. And you would go with the three sig figs from the 55.0. Now, let's apply this to some practice problems here. If we have 2.67 grams per milliliter, and we want to convert that into kilograms per liter, you know that grams can be converted to kilograms in a one-step metric conversion. So the number one will go next to kilo, and the 10 to the third will go next to the one-letter base unit grams. Now, we need to convert milliliters to liters. So put milliliters on the up diagonal so it cancels. The one goes next to milli. 10 to the negative third goes next to liters like this. That will cancel milliliters and give you kilograms per liter. In your calculator, 2.67 divided by second E3 divided by second E negative 3. Enter. And that's going to give you 2.67 kilograms per liter. Number two, convert the density of neon gas from 8.9994 times 10 to the negative fourth milligrams per milliliter. So here, converting milligrams to kilograms is a two-step metric conversion because that's converting from a prefix to a prefix in the metric system. So milligrams goes to grams in your one step, and then in the second step, kilograms to grams, like this. Then milliliters gets converted to liters, and the one is next to the prefix, and the power of 10 is next to the base unit. And that will give you 8.9994 times 10 to the negative 7 kilograms per liter. That's because the number 1 and the power of 10 are all exact. They have infinite sig figs, but you had five significant figures here. So that's why I'm ending with five significant figures. If you don't know how to put this in your calculator, 8.9994 second E negative 4 times second E negative 3 divided by second E 3 divided by second E negative 3. Enter. It's kind of a lot. Okay. Okay. Let's do one more. Here we're converting 35 
miles per hour into meters per second, and they gave us a conversion between feet and miles. So what we should probably do is convert our miles first to feet using that conversion. So the one goes next to miles, the 5280 goes next to feet. Now, you know that we can convert feet to inches. So there in one foot, there are 12 inches. Then you know from the beginning of this section that we have a conversion between inches and centimeters. And then I can convert centimeters to meters. So it's 2.54 centimeters in an inch. And then one centimeter is 10 to the negative two meters. Now, hours can get converted to minutes and minutes can get converted to seconds this way. So hours will cancel, minutes will cancel. You should get 16 meters per second. So in your calculator, 35 times 5280 times 12 times 2.54 times second e negative 2 divided by 60 divided by 60, enter. Okay, now, it is most common to use the rate to convert between distance and time. And it is also common to use density, which is mass over volume, to convert between those two um, measurements. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a sample problem down here where we use density to help us cancel units. Now something I'd like you to write down just so you have it in the back of your mind for density is something known as the density triangle. Since density is mass over volume, if you cover up the D, it tells you take mass and divide it by volume. If you're solving for mass, you cover it up and you take density times volume. If you're solving for volume, you cover the V and you take mass divided by density. Okay, so you may use that at some point. Here they want to know the volume in liters of a 15 kilogram piece of zinc metal with a density of 7.13 grams per mil. Now, kilograms has to get converted to grams so you can use that density. And then once you cancel grams with the density, you can convert milliliters to liters in a one-step metric conversion. So you start with 15 kilograms, kilograms is on the diagonal, the one goes where the prefix is, the power of 10 goes where the base is. Now kilograms canceled, grams is on the diagonal, we're going to go to milliliters because we can use this density as a fraction. So the 7.13 goes with the grams and the one goes with the milliliters. So this here is the density. Then milliliters gets converted to liters. The one goes next to the prefix. The power of 10 goes next to the base. In your calculator, this would be 15.0 times second E3 divided by 7.13 times second E negative 3. And you're going to have three sig figs in your answer because you had three sig figs in 15.0. And you had three sig figs in um, the 7.13. So let's go on to the next page. And let's take a look here at the practice problems. Okay, so here it says the density of mercury is 13.6 grams per mil. What is the mass of 2.5 liters? So what you can do is convert liters to milliliters in a one-step metric conversion, and then you can use the density here to cancel milliliters to give you grams. So this would be 34,000 grams. 
Now, you could have also used the density triangle because if you're solving for mass um, and you cover up the M, you need to take density times volume. The only thing was you had to convert this volume of 2.5 liters to milliliters before you could multiply because it has to have the same volume unit, okay? So in this case, it might have been just easier to do this rather than doing this one-step conversion and then just multiplying it out. Number two, the density of lead is 11.2 grams per centimeters cubed. The volumes of one centimeter cubed and a milliliter are exactly equivalent. So I told you that earlier. I told you to know that because it's really useful. What is the volume in liters of a 16.5 kilogram piece of lead? We need to convert kilograms to grams so that we can use the density because the density has a mass unit of grams. This is a one-step metric conversion. Then you're going to convert grams to centimeters cubed using this density. 11.2 goes next to the grams and a 1 goes with the centimeters cubed. And then if we're looking for liters, you know that a centimeter cubed is the same as a milliliter, so I'm using this here. And then in a one-step metric conversion, you can convert milliliters to liters. So in your calculator, this would be 16.5 times second E3 divided by 11.2 times second E negative 3. This should be a multiplication symbol. 1.47 liters is your answer. Number three, the speed of light is 3.0 times 10 to the 10th centimeters per second. Sunlight takes 8.29 minutes to travel from the photosphere of the sun to the earth. How many kilometers is earth from the sun? Okay, so we should probably convert minutes to seconds so we can use this speed of light to cancel seconds. So 8.29 minutes and in one minute, there are 60 seconds. And then we're going to use 3.0 times 10 to the 10 centimeters per second, that speed of light to cancel seconds. And then if I'm trying to get to kilometers, this would be a two-step metric conversion, converting centimeters to meters and then meters to kilometers. And then in your calculator, 8.29 times 60 times 3.0 second E10 times second E negative 2 divided by second E3. You should get 1.5 times 10 to the 8 kilometers because even though these powers of 10 and the number 1 are exact and there are exactly 60 seconds in a minute, that's a defined quantity, you have three sig figs in this 8.29 minutes and then two sig figs in this 3.0. So that's why I'm rounding to two points, uh, to two sig figs. Okay, now let's talk about raising units to a power. Now, sometimes units are squared or cubed. And that means that if you are converting it to another unit, you need to be careful with the unit equations that are being used because you may have to square or cube the unit equation also. Here it says we have 0 0.35 meters cubed. So I put what was given here. They want us to convert to milliliters. You know that a milliliter is a centimeter cubed. So you need to convert meters cubed to centimeters cubed before you can go to milliliters. So meters cubed is going to follow you onto the diagonal. Okay, so I would just write meters cubed here. They did it a little bit differently where they just cubed the entire unit equation. That's not incorrect. Um, and you're going to convert to centimeters cubed. The number one goes next to centi. Centi is 10 to the negative 2, but you have to cube that power of 10 also. Then 
meters cubed will cancel and you can convert centimeters cubed to milliliters because you know that those are one to one. Now, this 10 to the negative 2 cubed is the same thing as 10 to the negative 6. So what this really means is you're taking 0.35 divided by second e negative 6 and then times 1 and then you get your answer. Now, this is the same thing as multiplying by 3 fractions with 10 to the negative 2 on the bottom. They're simply showing you that concept. Now, if I take a look here at the practice problems. Number one says, convert 4.3 decimeters cubed into centimeters cubed. So decim has to, that's a prefix. We have to go to meters cubed before you can go to centimeters cubed. So we're going to take 4.3 decimeters cubed convert to meters cubed. The one is next to the prefix deci. Deci is 10 to the negative one. Since these are cubed units, cube the power of 10, which will give you 10 to the negative third because you multiply this negative one exponent times the three. Then we're going to convert meters cubed to centimeters cubed. The number one goes next to centi. Centi is 10 to the negative two. You have to cube that power of 10, which gives you 10 to the negative 6. In your calculator, this would be 4.3 times second e negative 3 divided by second e negative 6. You'll get 4,300 centimeters cubed. That's two sig figs. Now, for number 2, if you've got 14.7 pounds per inch squared, and we're going to grams per centimeter cubed. We can use what is given to convert pounds to grams first. So we have one pound is equivalent to 454 grams. So now we're done with this top unit. I need to convert inches squared to centimeters cubed. Now you know from um, the earlier section that an inch is 2.54. So you square the number one and the 2.54, and that's going to give you 1,030 grams per centimeter squared. I want three sig figs in my answer. Number three, convert a density of 8.2 kilograms per meter cubed to pounds per feet cubed. So what we should probably do is convert kilograms to grams and then grams to pounds using what was given in the previous problem. So one kilogram is 10 to the third grams and then 454 grams is a pound. Now I'm done with the unit on the top. Let's convert meters cubed to um, centimeters cubed, centimeters cubed to inches cubed, and then inches cubed to feet cubed. So meters cubed to centimeters cubed, one goes next to centi, take that 10 to the negative 2 and cube it. Meters cubed is going to go to, oh, I'm sorry, centimeters cubed is going to go to inches cubed. One inch is 2.54 centimeters, but since these units are cubed, cube the 2.54. And then centimeters cubed is going to feet cubed. And in one, oh, I'm sorry, did I mess that up? Did I mess something up? Kilograms to grams, grams to pounds, meters cubed to centimeters cubed, centimeters cubed to inches cubed. I did, I messed, I messed this up, whoops, inches cubed to feet cubed. So there are 12 inches in a foot. Since these units are cubed, cube the 12. And yes, you're cubing the one in these, but one cubed is just cubed, so I don't bother to even show that. You're going to end up with 0 0.51 pounds per feet cubed. I started with two sig figs, and I'm going to end with two significant figures. All right, let's look at temperature. Temperature. 
temperature is the intensity of heat. And it's the average kinetic energy of particles in a sample. Heat is transferred between two objects that are in contact with each other. It moves from a warmer object to a cooler object. And Celsius is a scale of temperature where zero degrees Celsius is the temperature where water freezes. And 100 degrees Celsius is where water boils. Fahrenheit was an attempt to avoid the use of negative numbers. So on really cold German days, they use the coldest temperature produced with rock salt and ice as the zero point. They later adjusted it so that the freezing point of water was 32 degrees Fahrenheit and the boiling point of water was 212 degrees Fahrenheit. It, Kelvin, which is another scale, it's not degrees Kelvin, it's just Kelvin with a capital K. Now this was developed with the idea of an absolute temperature scale where the absolute coldest temperature that could ever be obtained happened to be related to um, the temperature at which there was absolutely no motion in particles and this was known as absolute zero which is 273.15 degrees Celsius colder than the freezing point of water. And um, those conversion factors are given for you down here. I'm going to rewrite them because I think it makes a little bit more sense. The temperature in degrees Fahrenheit is 1.8 times the temperature in degrees Celsius plus 32. And then the temperature in degrees Celsius is the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 1.8. Um, down here at the bottom, if you want the temperature in Kelvin, you're going to take the temperature in degrees Celsius plus 273. Um, they also give you 273.15. I'm fine if you just use 273. And then the temperature in degrees Celsius would be the Kelvin temperature minus 273. Okay, now the significant figures in a temperature are usually determined by precision. Um, so if you're given a temperature to the tenths place, then when you convert it to another unit, you would also report it to the tenths place. If you're given a temperature as a whole number, then when you convert it to another unit, you would also represent that as a whole number, and so on. Let's take a look at the next page. This is the very last practice set given here. So it says in number one that cesium metal is really soft. It has a melting point below body temperature. They want to convert 28.4 degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. So you would multiply this by 1.8, you would add 32, and you would get 83.1 degrees Fahrenheit. Since the given temperature in degrees Celsius was to the tenths place, then my degrees Fahrenheit conversion will also be to the tenths place. Number two, air can be liquefied at a temperature of negative 319 degrees Fahrenheit, convert to degrees Celsius. So here you're going to subtract 32, and then you're going to divide by 1.8 to give you negative 195 degrees Celsius. Since my degrees Fahrenheit temperature was a whole number, so was my answer in degrees Celsius. For number three, I need to make sure that my answer here is correct in number three because I wrote it differently someplace, someplace else. All right, convert absolute zero, which is zero Kelvin, to degrees Fahrenheit. So we have to convert to degrees Celsius first before you can go to degrees Fahrenheit. So we need to subtract 273 to give us negative 273 degrees Celsius. Then you're going to take negative 273 degrees Celsius times 1.8, and you're going to add that to 32, and you're going to get negative 460 degrees Fahrenheit. I put a decimal on the end there to keep it as a whole number.